As it tells us in Psalm 71, in Psalm 71, reading from verse 7, I am as a wonder unto many. I thought you would say that for yourself. Not only amen, repeat that. I am as a wonder unto many. Let the heavens hear you. You understand? That was David. And Saul was chasing him and chasing him. And David always escaped. And then Saul hung his head. Why can't I get this David? I want to catch him, and he'll never catch you. I want to get him, and he'll never get you. I want to destroy him, and he'll never destroy you. They say, he is there. Go for him. Go for him. By the time they get there, he has escaped danger. I want to announce to you this year, for the rest of your life, you will escape danger. I am as a wonder unto many, but thou art my strong refuge. Thou art my strong refuge. He so believed in God that he was overwhelmed, covered, enveloped by God, and God became a city of refuge that no hand, evil hand, could ever touch him no evil hand will ever touch you. Look at verse 8. In verse 8, let my mouth be filled with thy praise and with thy honor all the day when you praise the Lord, he inhabits the praises of his people. And when he inhabits the praises of his people, all your prison doors are wide open. And the foundations of the prison, they'll be shaking to the foundation in Jesus' name. Look at verse 14 there. In verse 14 it says, But I will hope continually and will yet praise thee more and more. It tells us in verse 17 there, in verse 17, O God, thou hast taught me from my youth, and hitherto have I declared thy wonders, thy wonderful words. When you keep on declaring, when you keep on explaining, when you keep on proclaiming, when you keep on pronouncing the wonders of the Lord, what you say will be your realization. You don't talk about the devil, talk about God. God will come to your age. You don't talk about demons, talk about our deliverer. Deliverance will come to you in Jesus' name. You don't talk about what they have done, what they are doing, what they can do. You talk about what the Almighty God can do in your life. And the fulfillment of the pronouncement, proclamation, the promises of God will be yes and amen in your life in Jesus' name. It tells us in verse 21, in verse 21, thou shalt increase my greatness I want to say that for myself thou shalt increase my is my greatness I want to say that again for myself this year will become different from every other year in your life thou shalt increase my greatness and comfort me on every side and comfort me on every side and comfort me on every side look at verse 22 in verse 22 i will also praise thee with the subtry even thy truth oh my god unto thee will i sing with the half O thou holy one of israel verse 23 in verse 23 my lips shall greatly rejoice when i sing unto thee it says my lips shall greatly rejoice you know there are people that have two levels for the mouth they're singing for their heart, they're entertaining sorrow, they're entertaining unbelief, 
they're entertaining doubt but he says my heart my spirit my mouth my lips everyone will be united in praising the lord and when your whole being within and without when they're united in praising the lord the praises of the lord will bring wonders in your life Amen. wonders in your prayer wonders in your pronouncement and wonders in every part of your life in jesus name and it says and my soul which thou hast redeemed it tells us in verse 24 in verse 24 my tongue also shall talk of thy righteousness all the day long for they are confounded for they are brought unto shame that seek my heart. Look at chapter 22 of Job. We're talking about simple ways to receiving supernatural wonders. In Job chapter 22 verse 21, Acquaint now thyself with him, and be at peace, thereby Good shall come unto thee. Good shall come unto me. Going out, coming in, good shall come unto me. Anywhere, everywhere I go, because I acquaint myself with him. I know him. I love him. I believe him. And I take his word to be as true today as it ever was. Because of that, good shall come unto me. Verse 22. In verse 22, receive, I pray thee, the law from his mouth. And lay up his words in thine heart. A kind of empty out of your heart all the words of men all the terrifying words of men all the harassing words of men all the threatening words of men kind of expunge them empty your heart empty your life empty your mind of the words of men and then store in your heart lay up his words in your heart that word will do good in your life. And in verse 23, verse 23, if thou return to the Almighty, thou shalt be built up. That's a simple way to have supernatural so wonder in your life, that you return with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. You return unto the Almighty. And then you say, put, thou shalt put away iniquity far from the tabernacles i want to add an amen there amen. Uh, you understand that i want you to think about this in your life if you have this thing let's call it a and then you have this other thing let's call it b a is occupying too much space in your life too much space in your thinking and too much space in your destiny. A is taking too much time, too much thought, too much thinking, and too much planning, and it's weighing down on your life. B does not have a place there. And so, and you want to be, I'm talking of A, the atrocities. I'm talking of A. The agony. I'm talking about A, all those anti progress things in your life. But we're talking about B. And B does not have enough chance to occupy in your life. What you do is you empty your box, you empty your life of A. Take all those atrocities away and take all those iniquities away and take away all those things that are having anti-progress effect in your life take them away so that we can create time we can create space for the blessings of god in your life that is what 
we always do. There's dirty water in the bucket. I need that bucket for clean, good water. I have to pour that water away. There are too many, uh, you know, maybe bad things and dust and refuse in a particular place. I want to plant some good things there. I have to remove the refuse. If there is sin, if there's iniquity, if there's anything that is not allowing the blessing of God to settle down in your life, you empty your life, you empty your heart of all those things, and then you bring in the blessings of the Lord. Put away iniquity far from thy tabernacle. Look at verse 24. In verse 24, then shalt thou lay up gold as dust. That's called prosperity. Poverty will leave your life. Prosperity will take its place. And the gold of offer as the stones of the brooks. Look at verse 25. It says here, The Almighty shall be thy defense, and thou shalt have, tell me yourself, plenty of silver. Who is that? Do you really believe? Be it unto you according to your faith. And then in verse 26, it says, For then shalt thou have thy delight in the Almighty. Thou shalt lift up thy face unto God. Verse 27, it says, Thou shalt make thy prayer unto him. And, 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 praise the Lord tonight, you will hear you. Thou shalt pay thy vows. Look at verse 28. In verse 28, thou shalt also decree a thing. What are you decreeing tonight? What are you saying to the Lord tonight? This is me. And according to your word, this I decree. Thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee, and the light shall shine upon thy ways. Darkness, get out of your life. Pass of darkness out of your life. All the agents of darkness out of your family. And all those, uh, uh, you know, my, all those imaginations and manipulations of darkness out of your life tonight in Jesus' name. Because now something good must happen tonight in your life. Ephesians chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 10. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10. It says, be strong. I will be strong. Be strong in the, in the Lord and in the power of his mind. Look at verse 11. It says in verse 11, Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand. Do you know you can stand? Do you know you will stand? The winds will blow, but you will stand. The ages will try to rush after you, but you will stand. And all the things that the devil could, you know, bring up, manufacture. They're trying to stand against your progress. But tonight, I'm here to tell you from the Lord, it's time for you to stand. Stand against the wiles of the devil. In verse 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places, and you are going to conquer them all. Verse 13, in verse 13, wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that she may be able to withstand in the evil day the evil day will not conquer you the evil day will not blindfold you the evil day will not stop your progress the evil days will not blow you down and the evil powers will not overcome you in jesus name 
It says that he may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all, tell me. Having done all, it means having conquered all those enemies, you stand and you're saying, let another one come as I conquered in the name of the Lord. All those ones flat on the ground, I'll conquer them again. Let any sickness come as I conquered all the past sicknesses, this one, I will conquer it again. And maybe there's any sickness, there's any infirmity there as we have conquered in the past tonight. I call the name of Jesus upon your sickness. I call the name of Jesus upon the mountain and the problem you have and that thing must live today. Because it says, having done all to stand. Can I apply that to myself? Uh, you know, for myself, I've done this, I've done this, I've done this, and then I'm wondering, uh, am I not tired? I'm not, am I not weary? Am I not weak? Can I do any other thing? I will stand. I will stand. Uh, you know, sometimes when you, you know, you fight against this and fight against that and praise the Lord, you overcome, you conquer them and the devil thinks because you conquered one, two, and three, you must be tired now. And so he comes and you are still standing. I said you are still standing. You will not be weak. You will not be weary. And nothing will overcome or prevail over your life in Jesus' name. <laughs> Having done all to stand, every temptation you overcome. And you are still standing. Every opposition you overcome. And you are still standing. Every weakness of the mind. Every sickness in the body, every challenge that comes in the day or night, you have been fighting and fighting, you overcome, you will still be standing. Look at verse 14 there. In verse 14, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. Having on the breastplate of righteousness, verse 15, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, verse 16, above all, above all, above all. Anytime you are going out, you need to take this and take this and take this. Remember, after you've taken every other thing, above all. Every time you are traveling, you know the way the road is in this in our country and maybe other countries and you're taking this this and that above all there's something else you need to take anywhere you're meeting a friend you're meeting an enemy you're meeting a challenge and there is something you know you want to go and do you're going for an interview above all taking the shield of faith Taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Are you able? Will you be able? With faith, all things are possible. With faith, all problems are solvable. With faith, all mountains are movable. With faith, all prayers are answerable. And it says, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the furry works of the devil. That's of the devil. Verse 17. In verse 17, it says, and take the helmet of salvation, the assurance of salvation, the evidence of salvation, the experience of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. In verse 18, praying always. How often do you pray? I said, how often do you pray? 
Now, you don't have to kneel down all the time. You can be walking with your eyes open. You can pray and God will answer. You can be lying down and then you pray. Do you remember Jonah? Jonah was in the whale, in the belly of the whale. And in that condition, he wasn't standing or kneeling. He was just there. He didn't even know the direction in which he was. And he prayed and God answered his prayer. God will answer your prayer. I remember I was, you know, traveling from... Nigeria to, I think, U.S. or somewhere. But we stopped because we had to change planes in France, in uh, Paris. And I was carrying that time. I didn't have, you know, people traveling with me all the time. Now I do. Things have changed now for the better. Things will change for the better in your life. But I was carrying my, you know, hand luggage, and another person was there in the plane. And then God got down was also you know what the tarmac and she ran by my side and said pastor pastor are you pastor so and so i said um, you know by the grace of god i am you will not deny your name yeah. and she said can i have an appointment with you i said why oh she said i've been trying to come and see you at bagada old bagada new bagada now and uh, so I said, but uh, what's it you are looking for? She said, I've been married, and she told me so many years she had been married and no child. I said, hey, you don't need any appointment. I said, what well, I need? I said, no, the appointment is here. He <laughs> said, at the tarmac, as we are walking, I said, I didn't allow her to finish, uh, you know, questioning of unbelief. We were still opening her eyes and we were walking. And I said, in Jesus' name, Lord, this woman needs a baby, miracle baby. Give the baby to her in Jesus' name. <laughs> and then I said, bye-bye, the Lord has answered your prayer. Tonight, bye-bye, the Lord has answered your prayer. One year after, she came to the Thursday meeting at Magada. You will come back again. And she came over here to give testimony and said, I met the pastor. We had an appointment at the tarmac walking. I didn't close my eyes. He didn't close his eyes. And he prayed and God answers. The same pastor is still here. The same God of heaven is still answering prayer. And your prayers are answered in Jesus' name. My point is praying with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. When you pray in the spirit, it doesn't matter whether you're sitting or standing, whether you're lying down or whatever posture in the spirit not in the flesh tonight every prayer you pray will be a prayer in the spirit you will not mind the pain you will not mind the medical report you will not mind the history of the case just pray not according to the medical report not according to what you feel in the body pray in the spirit you're expecting a miracle, you'll get a miracle. Praying always with all prayer and supplication. It says, and watching thereunto with perseverance and supplication for all saints. Your answer has now come. We're looking at number two here. Number two, we're looking at simplified ways to restoring superseding wonders superseding wonders in judges chapter 6 reading from verse 13 gideon said unto him unto the angel oh my lord if the lord be with us he says if the lord really is with us why then is all this befalling us and where be all his miracles. 
that our fathers told us of, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt with miracles? But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. Look at the next verse there. In verse 14, and the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have not I sent thee? The Lord is sending you forth. Not only that, your own problems will be solved, you'll be a solution to the problems of other people. A solution to the problems of your family. A solution to the problem in your company. A solution to the problems in your country. Is that possible? Gideon thought, not possible, not me. I don't have that position. I don't have that power. And there's no possibility that the problems of, of Israel as a nation will be solved through me. But the Lord is saying to you today, go forth, you'll be a solution to the questions that people are asking. In verse 15, in verse 15, and he said unto him, O oh, my Lord, where we shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. Look at verse 16. In verse 16, and the Lord said unto him, Surely, 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 as we're going out tonight, surely, as we wake up tomorrow morning, surely. As you are confronted by any challenge and you rise up to the challenge and you have to solve the problem, surely. As you want to pray for any member of your family, your wife, your husband, your children, surely. And as you pray for any friend to solve any problem, tell me, surely, 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 the Lord said, I will be with thee. I will be with thee. Anywhere you go, anything that confronts you, I will be with thee. And thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. A new day for Gideon. A new day for you. Deuteronomy chapter 7. I'm reading from verse 12, simplified steps to restoring, superseding wonders. In Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 12, wherefore it shall come to pass. It will happen. It shall come to pass. If ye hearken to, the, to these judgments and keep and do them that the Lord thy God you see your God are you saved yes are you born again are you Are you a child of God in the day in that ran in the family? And daddy said, I'm dying. Take care of the rest of the children. That sickness will not come to you. The sickness that had run in, you know, medical terms, they say, you know, it runs in the family. And as it's running, it catches. everybody in the family 
except me. Except me. They say, you know, all your uncles and all the other people, they became blind by the age of 40, 42, 45. And now you are 44. And it's coming, not me. Not me. Whatever you say, no. No to heaven will say no. God's name. Look at verse 19. Verse 19. It says, The great temptations which thine eyes saw, and the signs and the wonders and the mighty hand and the stretch out arm whereby the Lord thy God God brought thee out so shall the Lord God, thy God do unto all the people to whom thou art afraid. Yeah. Unfortunately, the children of Israel said they didn't know. You, you know, they, they didn't have the uh, way, the two-way communication. Meanwhile, the people in Canaan were afraid of them because they had heard the great things the Lord had done, and they were afraid of the people. You'll not be afraid anymore in Jesus' name. I will not be afraid anymore. You know, sometimes we'll say that, but when the robber comes to meet the road and events begin to happen, and the things that is to make you afraid, they come. Then you begin to tremble, but you must remember, you have said before the Lord, I will not be afraid anymore. I will not be afraid anymore. And the things... I got you worried, fretting in the past. Everything conquered in Jesus' name. Look at Psalm 89. Psalm 89. I'm reading from verse 5. In Psalm 89, reading from verse 5. And the heavens shall praise thy wonders. O Lord, thy faithfulness also in the congregation of the saints. Look at verse 6 there. In verse 6 it says, For who in the heaven can be compared unto the Lord? Who among the sons of the mighty can be likened unto the Lord? Verse 7, verse 7 says, God is greatly to be feared in the assembly of the saints and to be urged in reverence of all them that are about him. And then he tells us in verse 8, O Lord God of hosts, who is strong? Who is a stronger Lord like unto thee? For to thy faithfulness round about thee. Verse 9, in verse 9, thou rulest the region of the sea. Every region of the sea in your life, the Lord rules on each night. When the waves thereof arise, ar arise, thou stillest them. Peace be still. Your heart, peace be still. Your mind, peace be still. In that storm, in your family, as if the ocean is going to break the boat, the ship, the family. Peace be still tonight. Everything that rises up to scatter, to shatter your family or your company or the work of your hand, peace, calmness tonight 
in Jesus' name. Look at verse 34. In verse 34, it tells us there, my covenant will I not break. The storm cannot break the covenant the Lord has made with us. Difficulties, challenges, problems, sickness, demons, wherever they are, they cannot break the covenant the Lord has made with you. My covenant will I not break, nor alter the sin that has gone out of my lips. Wonders. Wonders. Acts chapter 2. I'm going to read verse 43 first. Acts chapter 2, verse 43. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. By the apostles. For the people, by the apostles. In the people, by the the apostles, everyone, literally, everyone receives wonders by the apostles. Who are those people? Look at verse 38. In verse 38, and Peter, then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. These people, they were sinners, they were to repent, and the moment they repented, they were baptized in the name of Jesus, and wonders were done in them, in them, for them, by the apostles. Everyone, everyone, as you repent, you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, the wonders to be done by the apostles, will be for you, yeah. will be in you, yeah. but start but 39, for the promise is unto you. you, and to your children, and to all that are found. Are up, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Give me a good amen. The wonders were done by the apostles for these people. The promise is unto you and for you tonight. here tonight they are online on their various congregations wonders are going to happen to them by the apostles in jesus name look at verse 40 in verse 40 it says and with many other words i uh, did he testify and exhort saying save yourselves separate yourselves from this unto watch generation the people that are just separating themselves from this evil generation wonders for them wonders in them by the apostles look at verse 40 uh, verse 40 it says verse 41 rather now in verse 41 then did that Galilee received his word they were back and the same day were added unto them about 3,000. So these are the people, these are the people that the wonders done by the apostles, the wonders were for them, and the wonders are for you tonight. Look at verse 42. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and prayers. These are the people. They remain, they tarried, and the fellowship of the apostles and the wonders were done by the apostles for them who continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and continued in fellowship and in breaking of bread and in every verse you feed in. 
Your seat is there. Your place is there. You are in the fellowship. The, the wonders done by the apostles will be done for you. In you. And you carry your wonders, your miracle back home tonight in Jesus' name. We're coming to number three now. Step by step ways to retaining super breakthrough wonders. What you receive, you will retain. What is restored to you tonight, you will retain. This wonder will be permanent in your life. Healing, permanent in your life. Deliverance, permanent in your life. I have one quarter of the people saying the amen. Your amen will attract wonders into your life. Step by step ways to retaining super breakthrough wonders. Wonders. Look at Acts chapter 14. I'm reading from verse 3. It's long time, therefore, abode they speaking boldly in the Lord. Now, when you're speaking of the Lord, in the Lord, for the Lord, your voice must carry authority. You're speaking for the Lord. You're speaking in the Lord. You're speaking about the Lord. It says they abode there long time. Didn't mind whatever wind may be blowing around, speaking boldly in the Lord, which gave testimony unto the words of his grace and granted signs and wonders tonight and granted signs and wonders every day, and granted signs and wonders always to be done by their hands. Done. When? Where? In your life? In your heart? In your body? Signs and wonders, the Lord just grants. He grants it tonight in Jesus' name. Look at verse 7. And there they preached the gospel. Good news. And there they preached the gospel. Glad tidings. And there they preached the gospel. They didn't preach their own problems. They didn't preach current affairs. They didn't preach the doubts in the land. They didn't preach the recession in the land. They didn't preach the problems in the nation. There, they preached the gospel, and the gospel will work in your life. Yeah. Verse 8, verse 8 says, There sat a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his feet, being crippled from his mother's womb. Now, that's where the experts of the world don't have any solution. He was born like that. Something happened to the eyes even before the person was born. Look at the eyes, shriveled, short, withered. Even from the time the fellow was born. Look at the legs, all paralyzed. Before the child was born, there, there's no human solution. But there's a heavenly solution. I said there's a heavenly solution. And that solution is here for you today. Give me a good, good amen. Uh, we've seen things like that. Here we were in the crusade. And then all the people were there at the stadium. 
oh, like this, this one is a mini stadium. You see that ground floor and that and that, this is a mini stadium. And as we are there today, what happened in this stadium will happen in this mini stadium. And so, this child, one leg, all flesh, without bone, one leg. And then he will use a stick and wind the, he is used to that now, this boy, because the boy is, I think, uh, between 12, 15, whatever, and he'll be hopping around with one leg and one, one, uh, and one, one, uh, one stick, and I was praying. And I said, in Jesus' name, I thought at that time, at that time, I thought it's when you finish the prayer, and you say, in Jesus' name, I thought that final amen will do a miracle. But... When you mention Jesus, whether at the beginning, in the middle, or the end, something will happen. Yeah. And it's happened to you today. And so we said, oh Lord, there you are, the God of wonders, the God of all power. You're giving us the name Jesus that has all authority. As we mentioned that name in the middle of the prayer, all of a sudden, a creative miracle took place. And bone was created in that leg. And the boy threw the stick away. And he stood like I'm standing. And he walked like I'm walking. And he ran like I can run. And the mother opened her eyes and saw the boy. Now a creative miracle has taken place. And there's bone in that leg. Tap your leg, tap your leg, tap your leg bone in that leg and the boy was running and walking and running and the mother was much with joy excited because even before the end of the prayer a miracle had happened and the boy was born that way that name is here tonight that problem you came with that problem you were born with here is the night, the night of signs and wonders, the night of power, the night of miracle. It will happen again in Jesus' name. Not only far away that time, we're going to Taraba next week. I said we're going to Taraba next week. I, I, can, I can see now, we were at the stadium there just a few years ago. And this boy, about, I think, 20, between 21 and 23 years of age, he was born in this condition. Hands paralyzed, legs paralyzed, and then he devised a means, a half, a board, and there were some little robbers under that board. And there were Crawling like this and pushing uh, that rubber. I cannot demonstrate it very well because you have to go to the ground and, you know, be doing that. And now, if you are lame, rise up and walk. And we ended that crusade on a good note. People excited, people happy, miracles of every type happened. Miracles of every type happened. And now we were about to leave and park in front of the office there that I used. And unknown to the security people, three people that were paralyzed 
one on the wheelchair, I can see them now, the other two lying down on the march. And when we came out, the head of security had been with me, so he didn't know what had happened. When he got there, he said, why, why, why did you put these people there? He prayed for the I said, leave them alone, don't touch them, leave them there. And so before I... I entered the car, I said, in Jesus' name be healed. In Jesus' name be healed. In Jesus' name be healed. Three of them, three of them. Then I opened the door of the car and I entered in. I saw we uh, going. Side, I had shouted. I opened the door, the quivered, and they were walking normal. You will walk normal. I challenge your problem tonight. I challenge the difficulty you have tonight. And I say, in Jesus' name, be healed. And so, and so, in verse 8, there sat a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb, swam, who never had walked. Look at verse 9. The same had Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving that he had faith to be healed. Verse 10 said he didn't touch him said he didn't go to him said with a loud voice stand upright on thy feet and he lived and walked it's your turn and he lived and walked it's your turn that swelling will vanish away the fibroid will vanish away. That issue of blood will dry up. That thing that is swollen in your armpit will dry up tonight. That cancer will be healed. Those blind eyes will open tonight in Jesus' name. He lived and walked. I live and Whoa. I received my miracle. Stand up now. Now in your miracle. Stand up now in your miracle. The miracle is there. The signs and the wonders tonight will pass through your body. And that miracle, that miracle power will work. And you will never be the same again in Jesus' name. Close your eyes, open your mouth. Just tell the Lord in a few words what you want tonight. And then I will confirm it for you in the name. Any load of sin, tell him, he'll take them away. You have a challenge with guilt, with condemnation. Tell him, he'll take everything away. You have any challenge with any mountain? Tell him, he'll roll that mountain away. Tell him, you have any challenge with impossibilities in your marriage? Your marriage, there's been no child. Tell him, the night, the night of supernatural wonder in your life. You have a load you've been carrying for a long time. It's heavy on your head, heavy on your back, heavy in your life. Tell him, 
tonight to take away that load. Tears of sorrow, tears of regret, tell him he loves you. Tonight, he'll take everything away. Impotent in any area of your body, tell him he'll take the impotence away. has knocked at the door and entered the family. Tell him tonight, he replace poverty with prosperity. Failure. You're doing your best. Your best is earning the worst. Tell him, I'll take failure away and bring success. Fear, just fear lie, just fear nothing. driving you in a direction you don't want to go in life and you say I have no power against that driving spirit telling them all the way any concern you have any problem you have, you come to the place, to the point of solution, supernatural solution. Your prayers are answered in Jesus' name. My prayers are answered. My prayers are answered. No more doubt. Say it aloud. No more doubt. No more unbelief. No more fear. No more crying, no more sorrow, my prayers are answered. Wonder for you. Supernatural breakthrough for you. The Lord will put a testimony, a song in your mouth in Jesus' name. If you know, if you're sure that your prayers are answered, only then
you raise up your hand for confirmation. I pray for then you raise up your hand for confirmation. No doubt. I pray for everyone here. I pray those who have asked for forgiveness, those who have asked for salvation, those who have asked for restoration, grant it unto them in Jesus' name. Lord, sorrow is not of you. Sickness is not of you. Weakness is not of you. Weakness is not of you. Amity is not of you. Captivity is not of you. Every sin the Heavenly Father has not planted in your life be it uprooted now in Jesus' name. All the planting of the enemy, Lord, uproot it from their lives. All the planting of the enemies of progress uproot from their life in Jesus' name. You will not come again. He Oppression, break every yoke right now in Jesus' name. Problem in the brain. Problem. Problem in the brain, problem in the mind, Lord. Lord, everyone, God of power, Lord, I pray, this your beloved child, son, daughter, Lord, I pray, touch him, touch her, heal in Jesus. Jesus name that's visible sickness in the armpit, sickness in the armpit, in the tummy, in the leg, the eyes. Deem cannot see now, ears that cannot hear, tongues that cannot speak. Lord, I pray, supernatural wonder. Yeah. Heal them in Jesus' name. They say there's no job in town but Lord, restoration now <laughs> replacement right now the blessings of the Lord be multiplied in your life nobody here will go empty handed tonight something miraculous something supernatural something of the Great might of the Lord, do for everyone in Jesus. Jesus' name. To my good side here, testimony. Yeah. In my front here, testimony. Yeah. To my right hand side. 
now and always. Doors be open to you supernaturally. Receive. Receive. And retain everything you receive tonight in Jesus' name. Lord, we know you've done it. There's testimony there. There's testimony there. Lord, we thank you. It is. done in Jesus. Check up your body. Check up where the problem has been in the head. And only where the problem may have existed before this time, those problems are no longer there. And for those of us who have received, just come to my left hand side here at the choir seat so that you'll be given opportunity to give your testimony. Check up, check up, check up. Those problems you brought in, they are no longer there. The Lord has taken them away. The problems you brought in, they are no longer there. The Lord has taken them away. The Lord has taken them away. The problems are no longer there. The miracle has taken over the problems, the challenges you brought. Just check up and come just to my left-hand side here at the choir seat so that you can see our leaders, so that they can interview you and you have the opportunity of giving you a testimony that will lift and encourage other people. Check up, check up. Those of us who are moving away, this section of testimonies will also lift up your faith to receive because the Bible said, Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. The word of God there is the testimonies or the miraculous things the Lord has done. As you listen to these testimonies, God also will do yours. Check up your body. The testimonies are already there. The miracle is already there. Check up. Those of you who brought some people with some challenges, just help them. You check up. You confirm that the problems are already there. Just come to my left hand side so that you can be interviewed before you can give your testimony. Let's just uh, wait. Don't move away. Don't move away. Let's just uh, hear and listen to from our orchestra. I'm Dr. Oluwaru Tine Clement. I am a medical practitioner. Here with me tonight is Brother Joshua Odenide. He has a testimony to share from Ijegun District. Praise the Lord. 
I'm Brother Joshua Derende from um, Ijagumo District, Ijegun Group, Odi Solo. My testimony goes to us. Um, to us. First of all, I want to thank God for the salvation of my soul. I'm so grateful to God, despite uh, me having a very rough path um, into some, I'll say, into fleshly things. I thank God God saved me from that. But my testimony goes to us. It was that um, during the GCK, around the time we were having GCK, prevailing prayer, I came back from church. I usually go and close my chicken cage at the back of our house. So normally when I go there, I don't, I just go and close. So just get, I was just getting close to the cage and I just had this strong feeling of fear and all that. I just, okay, what could be, maybe a snake or something. So I just pointed a touchlight at the, chick, at the uh, chicken cage. So just there, I saw something shining. At first, I knew what it could be. So I ran inside the house. I then went to my brother's room for my touchlight to now check. Lo and behold, it was actually a python that was on top of the chicken's cage. I only want to thank God because nothing really happened. Because if I just did the normal thing of just going straight to the cage, closing, I don't know what could have happened. Maybe that snake could have beaten me and I don't know what could have happened. But I just thank God that despite we were praying, thank God that we were praying, prevailing prayer, we were praying that God would protect us from all those things. But I also said that we prayed and God answered that. God protected me from that, from being beaten by that particular snake or something has happened to me. I thank God that nothing happened to me and let his name be praised. In Jesus, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Tonight is Brother Endurance Irabo. He has a, a testimony to share with us. Praise the Lord, brethren. Well, I want to testify the goodness of the Lord in my life tonight. Well, the, uh, this afternoon, the devil decided to claim my life. By the grace of God, I've been one of the church pilots. They called me that uh, I'm going to. Uh, first start to carry people down to Bagada. I was, I was, I was okay. I just decided to make a haste. I just took a bus to, from my two down to Oshodi. And uh, from Oshodi, I take a Bagada bus. When I get to Bagada bus stop, I just, uh, when, the, when the bus just dropped me, I said, okay, let me cross. Me, I cross the first lane to the second lane. Because of that haste, I don't know how I fell out. I fall, I just form, I just, I just see myself lie down the center of uh, express with, with, with all the cars, with, you know, you know how this Bagada is, with their full speed. I don't know how God delivered me this afternoon. <laughs> Praise the Lord. My brother, when I fall down, I don't know how, how come about. I don't know how God put me out of the road. There is truck, the, 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 the truck uh, front of me supposed to smash me. I don't know how God stopped that uh, truck. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It's a wonderful thing tonight because I, 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 was, I was so surprised. Because I lost my, I lost my senior bride the last, uh, last two weeks. They buried him on Saturday in the U.S. They say accident. But all the plans of the devil... God make me to overcome. I say I must, I must return the glory to the Lord. Praise the Lord.
I'm Dr. Oluwaro Timi Clement, a medical practitioner. I also have with me tonight his brother Victor Ugochuku from the Cotton Group. He has a wonderful testimony to share with us tonight. Praise the Lord. My name is Victor Ugochuku. I'm from the Cotton Group. And I'm here to share my testimony of what the Lord has done for me. So I always have this, this urination problem. I'm not always able to urinate. Sometimes, if I want to urinate, I feel like urinating, but I cannot urinate at all. So this thing continued, and I told my mom. My mom prayed about it. She tried all her possible best, but nothing was no result. So on GCK August edition 2023, uh, after the man of God prayed, he said we should lay our hands on where we have the problem. And I laid my hand right in, at my abdomen. So after the ministration of the man of God, he prayed and after the last prayer, I, I felt a touch as if something sharp vanished from my belly. And it, since that day, I looked for the problem, I didn't see it again. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, from, uh, since early uh, year two, 20, 2022, he's been having a challenge for 18 good months. Uh, he could not freely pass or freely urinate. And through the prayer of the man of God, the Lord touched him. And here he is. The problem disappeared completely. Medically, we term that as uh, urinary retention. But God delivered him. Praise the Lord. He started limping and he, when he was a year and seven months thereabouts, he was seriously limping and we were so scared. We don't know what exactly was the problem. We applied some things. We checked to know if he had a fracture or it was a dislocation, but we couldn't really get what the problem was. So we took him to a bone healer and the bone healer checked and found out that he had a dislocation which lasted for a number of time probably three months and that was a week before the august um, 2022 crusade when we came for the crusade i wrote a prayer request asking god to heal my son because he was seriously limping and a very little child like that if he continues like that it means 
he's going to leave. And so I wrote the prayer request. I kept praying, telling God that if he can really heal this, my son, I'll serve him all the days of my life. I kept raising the prayer request, starting from that Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I kept asking God to heal him. Then on Wednesday, the day, um, on Tuesday, the next day, that was when we discovered we woke up that very morning, that is after the crusade, we woke up that very morning and we saw him running about. He wasn't limping anymore. He wasn't, you know, dragging the feet, any, in the feet anymore. So I just want to thank God. I want to thank our daddy for what he has been doing and may God Almighty bless him in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. My name is Blessing Francis. I'm from Gaso, local government area of Talaba State. I am here to testify to the goodness of God, what he has done in my life. I was having excruciating pain in my stomach, not knowing what the problem was. When I went to the hospital, the doctor diagnosed fibroid and I was booked for operation but it all happened on the day that our pastor wf Kumi will come to jalingo for supernatural liberation through christ global crusade on the day he landed jalingo the joy of his arrival overwhelmed my heart and i felt press i went to the restroom and there the supernatural power of god touched me and the fibroid came out on its own what i would have spent money in the hospital the lord did it for me free of charge and i am singing for joy that what god has done for me not even the world no the devil can take it away from me praise the lord some health challenges and uh, it's a hedge fund disease i couldn't stool normally so i went through a series of surgery i discovered some uh, complications after the surgery so i discovered that my uh, upper abdomen above my navel was swollen and it made me appear like a pregnant woman and uh, at my lower abdomen i discovered that it's hard and I'm having pain all over my and uh, my stomach pains we went to the hospital they asked us to run some tests we run those came back with the result it was like the doctor couldn't understand what the result was saying by the time I saw I noticed my, that my the tummy of my daughter was protruding and swollen as if she was carrying a pregnancy it always bring tears on my eye and uh, I didn't know what to do but then Thank God, when the, the GCK Mina eventually came and we attended it and after it, and after some times, after the GCK, I, we noticed that the, the swelling was no longer there. I believe that this global crusade that has been going on for quite a number of time now, that um, as many, everybody that has been receiving their miracle, not that our pastor, our pastor Lord is going to other state to touch them, no, it's because they believed. That, that, that is how they get their healing. So I have faith, I placed faith in God that I am going to get my healing. The global crusade eventually came and after the crusade, I believed I got my healing. I always answered, yes, answered amen, amen, when the man of God is preaching and I believe I got my healing. Suddenly I discovered that my abdomen is flat, no pain. And when the doctor came, he saw me, he touched me and he also shouted, that what is the meaning of this? That what happened? That did I go to a prayer house? I told him, yeah, yes, I went to a prayer house. And which prayer house? I told him, um, GCK, that just ended in Niger State. Say by which pastor? I told him, Pastor Doctor W F Kumi. Then he said, Oh, that's great man of God. That God has done it for you. Go and rejoice. 
praise the Lord. I want to thank God because God has already done it for me. I am healed. No swelling, no, no, no emission of fluid again. I am so, so happy. Praise the Lord. Lord. Those wonderful testimonies of what God has done will be permanent in Jesus' name. And the Lord will also do it for you in Jesus' name. We now want to take a testimony from here. Praise the Lord. With us tonight is Sister Comfort. Some four. She has a, uh, her testimony to share. Praise the Lord. Praise Master Jesus. The God of GCK has reached me. Praise the Lord. I'm here to share the goodness of God. I'm Sister Comfort from Ijegu District. God has showed me mercy. I had a serious headache, serious one, excruciating one since over one year. I've been treating it like normal headache. Before you know it, the things keep going down on me, bringing BP, bringing eye pain, bringing a lot of things, like I want to paralyze my left leg, my left right. I've been enduring it. In fact, I can't talk long like this. Once I have a kind of tension to talk too long, I will breathe last, except I keep quiet. So I started going for diagnosis. I went to my own uh, company hospital. They directed me to a force base. I keep going from the force base. They directed me to last suit. I was going from one test to another. I was praying to God. I was keeping it within me. Because I know what is happening to me is only God that knows the beginning and the end. Amen? So lastly, last year, I went to MRI. They told me it's a pituitary gland. And uh, I said it's not for me because Egyptian sickness is not for me. So I keep calling upon God. By the grace of God, I want to call the whole story short. Last January, the doctor told me that, Madam, you have to do the second MRI, and then you prepare for surgery. I said, Sir, I will come back. Jesus will do this surgery for me. I'm not going to do any surgery. So he told me to prepare millions. He, he said, I didn't say million. I said millions. I said, Sir, it's not the problem, but nothing will go. No razor will enter my body. I'm a child of God. He was laughing. So he told me, I went for the MRI. Before the MRI, I came across the man of God by the special privilege of the Most High. Amen. So after the prayer, the first thing I noticed was the head cooled down for the first time. In fact, my head could cool down for the first time in my life. After the prayer of the man of God, I began to see that my eye, I could open it like this before. I cannot stay without putting my hand like this. It will be so hot, my green everywhere. But since that time till now, I cannot have headache again. I know insomnia again. I can sleep very well. I'm like a baby. And every ear problem, all the eyes, everything just vanished. I didn't know how God just did it. It's like a mirror. I, I don't understand. In fact, I'm seeing, is it me? God is wonderful. God is just wonderful. So for me to confirm this testimony, I have to go back for the second MRI because I left doctor with the instruction to do the second MRI before I come back. So I went back to the MRI. I went for the MRI. I said, God, if you have healed me, MRI will tell me. So I entered, I did the whole thing. On Saturday, after that prayer, the result came, they sent it on mail for me. I saw it, I, some of the terms, you know, I cannot get it. So I sent it, Dr. Julius in last suit, who happened to be a member, I said, please interpret this to me. He said, this is cleared. There is no trace of pituitary gland on you again. I could say this God is wonderful. This God is great. Before then, I know that my, I was whole. I just wanted to confirm so that I can go back to that doctor and let him know that Dr. Jesus has done something. When I went back the day before yesterday, I said, Doctor, please check it if I can go. He said, what happened? I said, I told you Jesus has done the surgery and Jesus has done it. Praise the Lord. 
praise the Lord. Our sister here, for good one year, she was going about with severe headache. And as we've had her, she had uh, the diagnostics to, uh, tool, which is MRI, and she was diagnosed to have brain tumor. But after the prayer of the man of God, the tumor disappeared, and she is well and whole. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's go, let's go, let's go. 